What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm bringing you guys a super fun anti-meta OTK deck. And this might just be the best OTK deck of the format because in today's video we're showing off Grand Maju and with the addition of D Fissure back to 3, you still have access to D Shifter, some of the most broken cards in today's format. And then you're playing monsters that are really big and can just push for a game. So I'm really excited to be showing you guys this deck profile. If you guys do enjoy these deck profiles, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on the channel, deck profiles, dual videos, combo videos product openings all that good stuff you'll find it right here on the channel so make sure you guys subscribe to stay tuned into all of that and with that being said i'm excited let's get right into some grand maju otk all right so just before we get started in today's deck profile keep in mind that this deck is a blind go second you're not thinking about anything else you want to go second you want to otk your opponent and how you're going to do that is by either this card right over here which is grand maju or a lot of the other big beaters this deck has to offer which is really cool so with that being said let's get right into the deck profile of course we are starting off with three Grand Major de Iza. This card is insanely powerful in this deck. If you guys don't know, the effect is right there. It gains attack based off of the banished cards. We just saw on the most recent ban list, Fissure just came back to three. And Fissure being back to three is insane. It buffs this deck so much. So that's why I think the Grand Maju builds right now are some of the best OTK decks of the format. Then we're playing a ton of generic level eight, dark, big monsters that you guys can play that synergize really well with this deck. And so we're playing three Gizmec Orochi. Gizmec Orochi does multiple things for you. It summons itself from the graveyard or your hand. It banishes cards for you. So that's really good for your Grand Maju. It also can banish cards from your extra deck so that you can pop cards your opponent controls. Gizmeko Rochi overall is just a really powerful card for this deck. It being level 8 is relevant as well, which I'll get into later. Then we're playing 3 Danger Bigfoot as well as 3 Danger Thunderbird. Specifically, we want to play the level 8 ones because we have draw power in the deck that specifically work with this, and I'm sure you guys can already see it. We'll get there soon, but the Thunderbird and the Bigfoot are two really important cards because Thunderbird pops set cards your opponent controls, so if your opponent has any back row, you can pop those. And then Bigfoot pops any face-up card your opponent controls, so if your opponent has any floodgates or any cards cards that you can't otherwise out you can pop those of course you can pop monsters as well or field spells which is really relevant in today's format with Paralarino. so you can pop the Paralarino, you can pop a bunch of face up cards popping cards is really important especially in today's format with the cards that we're playing of course you don't want to pop a lot of the tier monsters because they'll get their effects however that's why you're playing stuff like d shifter or d fissure so that they don't get their effects right so popping cards here is really important specifically for the back row more than anything and then we're playing two eater of millions eater of millions of course really nice because it gets to banish cards for you it's a nice little battle face trick that outs a lot of monsters so i really like this card still add two then we're playing the bestial monsters i think the bestial monsters are still very important and very relevant in today's format so for that reason we're playing three druid worm and two magnemite now i'm going to explain these ratios just a little bit the reason we're playing three druid worm and two magnemite rather than the other way around although magnemite yes gets to search you cards on the end phase which is really cool the thing is with this deck you don't want to get to the end phase you want it to be your turn you want to be able to otk now you're not always of course going to be able to otk but the best chances of you otking is actually playing the three druid worm because if this card is sent from the field to the graveyard you can target a special summon monster your opponent controls you can send that card to the graveyard so the really cool thing about druid worm is you have a lot of link monsters that this deck can go into especially using your eater of millions or your orochi link them away and then you can use the link monsters for certain effects but these bodies also let you use the druid worm so that you can link the druid worm away get that effect as well which is really nice so that's why we're playing three druid worm and two magnemite you can easily play three magnemite two druid worm but i really like the send effect for the druid worm another ratio you guys could do for more names is like two magna two druid and one sarnir just so you have different bisted names but i just really like these ratios and i think five is the perfect number for the deck so that's why i really like three druid and two magna we're also playing the one change of heart of course because we're going second now i'm going to get into some of the most broken cards for going second so of course like change of heart is a really good one helps you otk helps you push for more damage clear your opponent's board that's why we're playing the one change of heart we're playing three raigeki as well as one harpy's feather duster raigeki i think is very important and very cool in today's format specifically because fissure is back at three if you activate fissure activate regeki that is so insanely broken. Now, you're not always going to get Fissure Regeki off, but Regeki is also really good into the Fluanderies matchup, and Fluanderies is actually a very powerful deck in today's format. Keep in mind, with Fissure being back at three, I don't know if they're going to be playing Macrocosmo, but with Fissure and Shifter both being at three, Fluanderies is probably going to be the second best deck after Tier Limits. So yes, this deck wants to beat the Tier Limit matchup, which is one of the best decks, if not the best deck in the format. You also
also want to be able to be other matchups, right? So Regeki does that for you. Harpy's Feather Duster does that for you as well. And then how are we getting to these broken cards? How are we getting to Regeki? How are we getting to Duster? How are we getting to Jane Heart or Abyssid Monsters? Well, we're playing a ton of draw power. We're playing three trade in. Of course, trade in is really good because like I said earlier, the level eight really matters. We're playing nine level eight monsters, three trade in. That's a perfect ratio. So you're always going to get this off. There's rarely going to be hands where you have trade in without a level eight. So for that reason, I really like three trade in. We're also playing three Allure of Darkness. Allure of Darkness is insane as well because you're playing, first of all, all dark monsters. But if you don't want to banish your level eight monsters because you want them for the trade in targets, it's fine. You have your Eater of Millions, which is a dark. You have your Bestial monsters, which are darks if you have extra of the same name. You have your Shifters, which is a dark, which is really powerful. Let's say you open two Shifter or you have extra Shifters later in the game. You can always banish these off of Allure. So Allure of Darkness is really powerful in this deck essentially because the whole deck is dark. So we have just a lot of draw power in this deck. Speaking of draw power, we're still playing two Pot of Desires. Again, it's a Grand Modular deck. You want to be able to banish cards. Pot of Desires banishes cards for you. Now we're only playing 40 cards. I'm going to finish the rest of the deck profile in a second. I want to talk about Desires and playing 40. Now a lot of people like to play more than 40 in this deck because of Grand Maju. They don't want to banish the Grand Maju. It's totally understandable. But keep in mind, you're playing three of all the best cards in your deck. If you start with your turn with a Pot of Desires and draw into like a Regeki or a Bistid or a Bigfoot or whatever it is, this does multiple things for you, right? It's obviously getting more cards in your hand, which is good, but it's also giving you more fodder for your Grand Maju. Because at the end of the day, if your Grand Maju is not big enough to help you OTK your opponent, then drawing it doesn't really matter, right? So that's why I still like the Pot of Desires even at 40, because at 40, you have the highest chance to see the Grand Maju to begin with, to see the Bistid, to see the Fissure, to see the Shifter. Once you start playing 45, it's like I'm seeing the cards that I want to see less, right? Then you start playing extra cards that you don't really need to play. This deck is really focused on playing the best cards in the deck and only the cards that you need to play and need to see, right? That's why I like two Desires still. And then we're playing two TTT. I really like two TTT, not even just for the draw effect. Yes, you can use it for the draw effect, but sometimes you can just straight up use it as a change of heart. Sometimes you can use it to look at your opponent's hand. Actually, funny enough, the change of heart effect comes up a lot because honestly sometimes you have enough draw power where you're like I don't need more cards I just want to start breaking my opponent's board apart right and that's what TTT does for you because you can just take a monster your opponent controls and that just helps you push for the OTK even further so I really like two TTT then we're playing three dimensional fissure as well as three dimensional shifter you have to be playing these going first going second shifter is just way too powerful same thing with fissure obviously you want to go second if your opponent does ever make you go first you have both of these but shifter of course is such a broken card you have to be playing three of this so that's it for the main deck it's a 40 card main deck you guys can see that this deck is straight to the point you don't want to be playing cards that are unnecessary you just want to be playing the most powerful cards you can so that you can focus on the one thing you want to do which is otk your opponent again even if it's not through grand maju you can otk through these big monsters over here i mean like gizmex 2450 you have 3k on the bigfoot 28 on the thunderbird so that you can still otk especially with the bistids even without the grand maju that's it for the main deck very consistent main deck with all the draw power all the power cards i really like this main deck moving on to the extra deck over here we are playing the one dingirsu the one hope harbinger the one draglubion with the heart earth dragon as well as the numeron dragon this is essentially a little otk package that you can play if you don't see the grand maju the dingirsu is just a really nice send for you hope harbinger is in the gate so all these cards essentially are just utility cards same thing with pain gainer as well as number 77 this pushes for a lot of damage and if you're not otking your opponent with this you can go into a zeus so a bunch of the cards here again we're playing are just toolbox cards speaking of toolbox we're playing ip mask arena this can come up if you don't otk your opponent you can sit on the ip so that on your following turn you have some sort of disruption you have the phoenix the cerberus the unicorn again just more utility disruption we have the one bls this card doesn't come up very often but when it does it's pretty good i mean especially because you're probably going to be making it with at least one of the level eight monsters which means you're going to get the effect where your opponent can't target this with effects and it can't be destroyed by card effects as well right so that's kind of cool doesn't come up super often like the card itself but when it does it's kind of nice it's kind of like a little avermax for you and then you're playing the one access code talker as well as the one apollo Apollo you don't go into too often but you know if you ever do if you ever can then this card's very powerful the other thing you can do if you don't want to play Apollo like I could say Apollo and Cerberus are probably the most cuttable cards and in these slots you can play super poly targets so that you can side deck the super poly I'm not really showing you guys a side deck in this deck profile but if you guys wanted to side deck super poly you guys can play me play like Garura Mud Dragon maybe even cut like the BLS if you want to and then play a Starving Venom as well so if you want to do super poly these three slots over here at the end could be spots for super Super poly targets, right? I just wanted to give you guys that option. But I do have a couple cards here in the side deck that I do want to talk about. Now keep in mind, like I said earlier, Fluandry is probably going to be one of the better decks in the format outside of Tier Limits, correct? So for that reason, there are cards in this deck 
that are not really good against the full under ease matchup. Shifter, Fissure, they're not really good at all against that matchup. So for that reason, you want to be playing cards that can break those full under ease boards, especially when you're going second. So I really like playing three Godarla. Godarla is really important because if they go barrier statue on you, this deck is going to have a tough time playing through barrier statue. Unless somehow, some way, you go Desires and you go Allure and then you have a big Gren Maju and you can normal summon this and then just attack over the barrier statue, which probably won't happen anyways because your opponent is probably going to have the trap or, or they're going to have map on their side of the field. So that's not going to happen too often unless that specific situation happens. Fluanderies can get kind of difficult, especially with the barrier statue. So I do like playing the three Godarla and then the three Lightning Storm as well is really good into the Fluanderies matchup. So for that reason, I just want to say that these two cards over here, the Godarla and the Lightning Storm, I think you guys should play these six because against the Fluanderies matchup, you're always going to side out these six for these six, right? And then the Bistids aren't great against the Flawandries matchup as well. But again, the rest of your side deck can be other cards that you can take those out for. Keep in mind the Bistid cards can also banish your own cards, which is kind of nice. But uh, yeah, so you guys can cut these six for these six against Flawandries. And then these ones you can honestly keep in. But again, you can have more side deck cards that you can swap these out for. But these six cards, or these two cards, but I mean, but both at three, of course, are cards that I definitely recommend putting in the side deck. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That is Grand Maju OTK. I think this deck is super, super fun. I really think it's the best OTK deck of today's format just because it can abuse some of the most broken cards against the metagame. And on top of that, normal summoning a Grand Maju that's like 10k attack out of nowhere and literally just running your opponent over is a very powerful thing in today's format. You're not worried about Imperm. You're not worried about Droplet. And I think that's really, really cool. I'm honestly really excited because I'm probably going to take this to locals a few times and play it because I think it's really, really fun. So if you guys want to try it out, make sure you do. And also, if you guys haven't already, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on the channel. Deck profiles, dual videos, combo videos, product openings, all that good stuff. You'll find it right here on the channel. So make sure you guys subscribe to stay tuned to all that. I appreciate every single one of you. And with that, Spanko signing out. Peace.